Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Worship in the early church looked a lot like this, like Christians gathering in their homes on Sunday, gathering to turn heart and soul, body and strength to worship the living God. Their Jewish counterparts gathered on Saturday, the Sabbath day, the last day of the week, the day of rest. But Christians began to gather on Sunday, the first day of the work week in Judaism. Why Sunday? Because it was on Sunday that Jesus was resurrected. Sunday is Resurrection Day. For Christians, every Sunday is a little Easter. We gather on Sunday to celebrate Jesus' presence among us, His resurrected presence, His defeat of death, His love for the left out and the kicked out and the left behind. The early church looked a lot like this. Christians dispersed across the known world, yet held together by a common story, the story of Jesus, and held together by common rituals, Sunday worship, the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of baptism. The Christians of the first century didn't have their own buildings. They didn't have churches. So they gathered in homes. These were not large gatherings, maybe 10, 20, maybe 30 people, a couple, several households worth. Early Christians were a remarkably diverse lot, poor and rich, enslaved and free, Roman citizen and not. So a group of Christians, geographically proximate, gathered in the home of a wealthier Christian, a larger home, and there they were, rich and poor, enslaved and free, side by side, and they did together what we still do today. They sang. They read scripture. They heard a word, they prayed, they took a collection for the needy, and they broke bread together, remembering the Last Supper as a memorial to the risen Christ. This table, this bread, it is for Christians a witness to the inclusive dimensions of God's realm. It is at this table that outsiders become insiders, strangers become family, and the waters of baptism prove thicker than blood. It is at this table that we become the beloved community, a borderless community, a community who refuse to privilege one another by nationality or tongue or citizenship, a community who refuse to privilege or measure one another by gender or orientation or wealth or color or ability or age. It is at this table that we swear allegiance to a risen Christ whose language is love. In eating at this table, at his table, by ingesting the bread and cup, we hope to learn this language, the language of divine love, the language of love in a hateful world of peace, in a violent world, of justice in an unequal world, of forgiveness in a merciless world, of healing in a sickened world, of humility in a prideful world, the language of sharing in a competitive world, the language of generosity in a miserly world, and the language of borderlessness in a bordered world. It is at worship, in the very presence of Christ, that we study and learn this holy language, its grammar and syntax, that we are immersed in it. We pick it up and practice it over and over. And the hope? The hope is that someday we become so conversant in it, so fluent in the language of divine love, that it becomes our first language, instinctive, natural, intuitive, and ordinary. Worship in the early church looked a lot like this. Like Christians gathered in homes on Sunday, gathered in homes across the known world, gathered to turn heart and soul, body and strength to the worship of the living God, gathered to remember the risen Christ and in his presence to break bread and share a common meal that we might learn together the language 
of God's divine love. Let this serve as a reminder that we will soon share the Lord's Supper together. And you may want to prepare with some bread or juice, or bread and wine, or bread and water, or, well, be creative. Should you not have the wherewithal to procure elements, join us in a communion of the empty hands, miming the motions of partaking. Here is the truth. Worship in the early church looked a lot like this. <laughs> 